Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, today, we are continuing our online class covering Leishnauer Zettel. And today, specifically, we are looking at the section on the Krumpau. Now, before we get into it, can anyone tell me what the uh, Krumpau is, what the translation of that is? Crooked stroke. Yes. Oh, crooked, right. Yep, the crooked stroke. So we'll start off like we usually do. We'll read through the original uh, verse from Master Leishnauer. Then we will, uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll look at um, uh, the commentaries from 44A8 or the Von Danzig manuscript. And uh, afterwards, we'll have a little discussion about that. And uh, I recorded a video before class of myself just doing it in the air. Um, did anyone else get video this week at all? No, of course not. But I got some. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> did, no we did we not didn't. get video. Okay. Well, I got uh, I got a little video to play, and uh, I'll, we'll play that towards the end just to kind of go over things. Nothing fancy. They did but... do a hundred of them, though. I was there. We did a what? Oh, nice. We did of them. Oh. The Crump Owl was part of it. Did, was I there for the Crump Owl? Yes, oh. you were. I did. Oh, yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> that That is why your legs hurt. Yeah. Oh, so there is video of it because Rob posted the fitness. So technically. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll give you credit for that then. You did you did the homework. Okay. I'm not going to fish the iron. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Rob saved your butt. Yeah. Okay, so the original text here. The crooked stroke. Crooked on him with nimbleness, throw the point to the hands. Who performs the crooked well with stepping, he hinders many a stroke. Strike crooked to the flats of the masters if you want to weaken them. When it flashes above, then move away, that I will praise. Don't do the crooked, strike short, chasing through, show with this. Strike crooked to who irritates you, the noble war will confuse him, that he will not know truthfully where he can be without danger. So I think a lot of, I think everyone here actually tonight has done the crooked stroke before. What, uh, what from that text stands out to you that you remember from doing these in class? Taking that step to the side, chasing through. Yep, there's that. That's definitely the step to the side. That uh, um, and specifically too, the line here where it says, um, "With stepping, he hinders many a stroke." So yeah, that key there, talking about that footwork. So we're talking about that that movement offline to uh, to help out with this strike. Anyone else? Throw on the point to the hands. Yes, that is a big one. The first two lines on page 98 and in St. George's name, uh, crooked on him with nimbleness, throw the point to the hand. Um, I know I've said that to you plenty of times that when we throw the uh, crooked stroke and we're targeting the hands, whether the person's an ox or cutting or whatever, uh, we always want to try to hit with the last tooths of the blade and um in my experience with training people when you're focused the more you focus on throwing the point to the hand and hitting with the very end of the blade the higher your own hands end up in the bond whether or not you hit their hands or not whether you hit the blade that doesn't make a difference but if you've concentrated on where can i put my book without knocking everything over <laughs> If I throw that cut where I really concentrate on getting the point in where I want it to, naturally my hands come up. If I'm focused on just simply suppressing their blade or striking low on their sword, whatever, my hands can drop low. As soon as I start focusing on my tip, my hands come up and I get nice and high here. So why do we want the hands to be high? There's the next question following on. Defense. Yes. Yes, Robert. To keep the opponent's blade like up and away from your face and mm -hmm. you're like the center of the the thing. I can't remember what it's called. The center line. I don't know. What's it called? I think you got it. Yeah. Yeah, know. the center. <laughs> in case Chris thinks I don't ever listen. Oh no, you do listen, yeah. 
you 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 are very observant during the whole class. Oh, there we go. Luke is just joining us. Hooray! Yay! We'll give him just a second. Hey, Luke, are you uh, connected? Yep. Hooray! Hey. Yay! So, question for you. Um, we're just getting into the beginning of the uh, Crump How and looking at the uh, um, the verse from Leash and Hour about the Crump How. Um, when we talk about uh, the line, throw the point to the hands, uh, yeah. and do, let, let's hear some commentary from you. What do you think about the, the throwing the point to the hands? Uh, when you're coming up with the crump and going offline, it's mm -hmm. hitting the hands, aiming yeah. towards their hands. That's the closest part to you when they're throwing an overhow. So you're leaping out of the way. Mm -hmm and throwing it in your hands, which I think just increases your defense of not being struck by them and also gives you a close opportunity target. And what's the advantage of having the hands high in the follow-on? <laughs> having the hands high is, you know, where they're connected to, so you get more reach at that. Well, there's two parts to that. So that's one part, yes. But uh, the other aspect of that is... Um, the fact that with the hands high, whether or not you hit your opponent or make contact or whatever, with the hands high, you end up in essentially the hanging here. If your hands are low, your head is open. With the hands high, worst case scenario, you have this hanging guard to be able to give yourself that high line cover. Because sometimes somebody flinches funny or they don't do what you expect them to do or who knows. I mean, every, no matter how many times we drill, somebody in, in actual sparring does something strange and it never works out perfectly, right? Every, maybe one in a hundred binds happens perfectly textbook. We never know what's going to happen. So having the extra cover here definitely gives you a little extra safety. So let's see, is there anything else? Do, do, do. The other line here that stands out, or the other section here that stands out to me, always interesting in the with the crumb pow, is uh, strike cro crooked to the flats of the masters if you want to weaken them. So, what uh, what technique is that talking about specifically with the crumb? Knocking them offline. Yep. There's the line before that talking about throwing the point to the hands where if our opponents and ox were targeting the hands because they don't have their hands they're not exactly going to keep holding the weapon but uh there's also this reference here right after that where it talks about striking into the flat of the masters so particularly say in the context of if an opponent throws a oberhau at you just that regular standard cut from above the crump how with its step offline and strike into the blade takes the energy of their cut which had been kind of coming towards you and now redirects it down into the ground so that way you have that little bit of extra safety there for whatever follow-up would be that could be a winding that could be uh mutier and duplier and any of the stuff we talked about last week in fact any of the work from the bind but uh um but yeah, we get there with a little bit more safety because we're coming in with that sub, uh, suppressing strike from above. So any other uh, comments on that before we go into uh, the uh, dancing uh, commentaries? Okay, so we were on page 98. Now we're gonna jump to page 116 in uh, uh, St. George's name. Let's see what uh, Von Danzig has to say about it. <clears throat> this is the text and gloss of the Crumpow or Crooked Throw with its techniques. Uh, crooked on him nimbly, throw the point to the hands. Who performs the crooked well with stepping, he hinders many strokes. Note, the Crumpow is one of the four oppositions or uh, Beer Versetzen, which I think we'll get into a little bit later against the four guards for which uh for with one counters the guard called the ox and also the stroke from above and the stroke from below 
So right there, we're saying that it works against Ox, an Overhow, and an Unterhow. Uh, do it like this. When you come to him in the Zufestion and he stands against you, holding his sword before his head with the guard of the Ox on his left side, then set your left foot forward and hold your sword on your right shoulder in the guard and spring with your right foot well to your right side against him and strike with the long edge with crossed arms over his hands. So, what does that make people remember from class and training? Um, just the footwork of like lunging to the side and making sure you're going around the radius of your target and not like actually in to like their, the reach of their sword um, and going like to the correct side as well. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> So he's saying here specifically, if you note, that uh, um, he's talking about if your opponent is in left ox, so they're on this side with their ox, which gives you that pre they're presenting their hands right there. Right. So it makes it that much easier to throw in coming from the right. The crossed hands being up and over. Yep. Um, would it be a thing to do if they're in left ox and you jumped to your left so that you were kind of on the inside between their sword and their person, you could probably get their hands at that angle, but also you have um, like space to get their head too, I feel like, if you went that way, but I don't know if that's correct or not. You know what I mean? You can perform a left or right crump how to someone that's in left or right ox. The idealized version, like the, the textbook version, is targeting the hands. But if you happen to be in a position where all you they're in left ox and you can only throw a left crump how, and that's just where things naturally, you know, encountered that's just the way it flowed um you can still target you if you're coming on the opposite side i personally wouldn't try to commit to targeting the hands at that point i would go for the uh, um the face the the head the the shoulder something like that yeah exactly that part that's open and uh as a result um once that you're targeting that open area they're either going to get hit or they're going to not be in left ox anymore right that, yeah, good. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. So, either way, okay, either they're just a lazy, dumb fighter and they're standing <laughs> there and you hit them in the face with your crumb pow, in which case, yay, fight's over. Or they turn and then move to, say, of all things, probably right ox to catch your blow, in which case now you still have acted in the vor, you're still taking the initiative here and they're responding to you, which now you can counter with the change through, with the binding, with whatever comes up from that. So right. tactically, you still have the advantage. Okay. Yeah. Good talks. These are always good talks. Yeah, I like it. It's a good time. Uh, I think by see. jumping to the uh, to the same side, if they're in left and you jump uh, to your right, which would also be their left. If they're in left ox, it's hard to then attack left if you're in left ox, right? Yes. Whereas if, it's not, if I was in right ox, it'd be very easy for me to put my point online. Um, so so you're not in as much danger from an, from an after blow um, if you go to the same side. All right. Yeah, there's definitely like a tactical superiority there that uh, – you're essentially flanking them. You're coming up on their back with that nice big spring step to the side. Uh -huh. So they can, I mean, when we're drilling slowly and the, per and you know, the person on the other side of the drill knows you're about to do the crump and you're learning, they can track you really easily because it's a drill. That's just kind of the nature right, of sparring, right. the nature of, of, of training, I should say. I, I know you're going to do that, and I can kind of go, ha-ha, got you, and just turn my body. When we're in an actual fight, I've thrown it over how, missed, I withdraw back into Ox, 
And as I'm withdrawing back into Ox, you see that opportunity and you chase after and strike with the crump. I'm not just in that instant waiting there for you to throw the crump for the 30th time in a drill. And now I'm, I actually have to respond to what you're doing and not just come up with the neat little counters in slow motion. Right. Okay. I like that. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Rob. That was a good point. So, uh, move on to the next section then. Everyone good on that first part? I think that's pretty straightforward. Oh, one thing. Here, I'll play just the video of me doing that first part. Hopefully, this shares smoothly for you. So, here it is. And boom, there's the first step to the side. Okay, so right there, what edge am I striking with, by the way? Awesome. No, your long edge. Yes, that is the true or long edge. Um, unfortunately, I was using just my iPhone to record this, so uh, it came out a little overexposed. But if you can kind of look at the uh, orientation of my hand there, um, let me take you off screen share. My hand is this way, not this way with the palm out. It's this way, knuckles out. So as I'm coming in with that crump here, I'm turning the blade this way. Now, just because I've had interesting discussions with people online about that, um, I'll say one of the things that I found interesting is in um, Meyer, he talks about using the uh, crump with the short edge explicitly. And whenever he throws it with the short edge, he's always talking about striking the blade, not striking the opponent. And with just a little bit of my own kind of playing around and talking to some people that study Meyer a little more in depth, what I noticed is if my hands, I don't know how well you'll be able to really see the difference here, but if I'm throwing essentially my crump with my true edge, my blade is angled forward, in this case, kind of towards the camera. If I strike it with my false edge, that rolling of the wrist makes it go from forward pointed to almost perfectly perpendicular to my body. So striking with the short edge give up, gives us, with that same kind of action of the crossing hands, strikes down on their blade with a little more um, emphasis striking with the true edge extends that cut out and strikes towards their uh towards their hands and face uh rob make some noise so that uh the camera jumps to you <laughs> hi jump to me why am i jumping to me because it looks like you were about to do it in the air oh yeah well i was, well, I was, I was just thinking when, when you do it from your left you are striking with the short edge when you when yes. you go from the right you're striking from the with the with the long edge from when you strike from the left you you do it with the short edge yes yep depending on but, which side you're, you're doing talk, but you're talking about striking from the right with the short edge yes okay see how naturally your point comes back like another 30 degrees from where it is nor it would be normally yeah yeah so it's just an interesting little note that uh meyer has a variant on this and uh it's something that i want to uh, uh i've been practicing my own on my own a little bit and i want to work that into a little more of my sparring so i shouldn't have said that because i spar you guys all the time now you know my secrets <laughs> thanks for the secret <laughs> What are you making, Luke? By the way, looks uh, looks like you got some uh, grill going there. Yeah, I just made some burgers with uh, pineapple and lettuce and all the good stuff. You know the trick to that, though, when you do the uh, pineapples with the burgers. Yeah. Um, get some uh, teriyaki sauce and marinate the burgers in teriyaki from the night before. Oh my God. And That's then grill it up. Again, thank That's you for the, the uh, 
<laughs> that's that's uh, uh, the the Red Robin bonsai. Maybe we'll get an ad placement or something. <laughs> I don't know if they still have the bonsai. It was one of my favorites when I worked there. But oh yeah, and Luke, in honor of you, I had my uh, my white claws, my drink of choice for tonight. Excellent. <laughs> I made a tequila and pineapple since I had the pineapple juice with the with the slip rings. We're just trying nice. to get sponsored here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're go just shoehorning it in. Yeah. I am never drinking again. By woodenswords .com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never drinking again. <laughs> you say that now. That's what everyone says the day after. <laughs> okay. Um, well, no, they don't. I thoroughly intend to drink again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the difference is Owen is honest and Sarah is lying. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the next section here. Uh, note the crumpow can be done from the shrankut or barrier guard from both sides. And in that guard, you should position yourself thus. So here's a little description about the uh, um, shrankut, the guard. When you come to him in the Zufestin, then stand with your left foot forward and hold your sword with the point beside your right side toward the ground with the long edge up and provide an opening with your left side. So you're giving him a target over this way. If he strikes to that opening, then spring out from the stroke, <clears throat> then spring out from the stroke toward him with your right foot well to your right side and strike with crossed hands with the long edge with the um <clears throat> with the long edge with the point to his hand. Uh, I'll just continue on because he's talked about it on the other side uh, before we move on here. Uh, item, execute the barrier guard thus on your left side. When you come to him in the Zufeshin, then stand with your right foot forward and hold your sword by the left side towards the ground with cross hand, crossed hands so that the short edge is up and provide an opening on your right side. If he strikes to your opening, then spring out from the stroke against him with your left foot well to his right side and strike him while springing with your short edge over his hands. So, some interesting discussion there, I think, about the guards, too. So, obviously, we're talking about the point of um, what Shrankut, the barrier guard, is, how that works, how to stand in the position. But, um, what uh, does anyone notice anything about uh, where he says? Um, Provide an opening with your left side. Anyone want to make comments about that? I'm going to. I want to see if somebody else wants to say something first. <laughs> Sounds like he's trying to get uh, your opponent to, you're trying to bait them into throwing an overhow to your left. So when you spring out to the right, their blade's in the wrong spot. Yes, exactly. By being in the guard shrankut, you are. Have, you have your blade low and off to the side, which I can, let me bring up the video there. So let me hit the share again. One second, guys, sorry. So here in Strongcut, I have the uh, um, blade down low. So obviously what we have here is we see this spot being kind of a nice looking target for an opponent, correct? Somebody that maybe doesn't know much about it looks and sees, oh wow, my sword's down here, or my sword, uh, his sword's way down there on the ground. He's leaving his whole left shoulder open. So that's where he comes in to make that attack. And if I, so wait a second, can I do this? Boom. So now that works out very well. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend like I totally meant to do that exactly that way, but uh this uh <laughs> graphically actually came out better than I expected. Um anyway, so now if I've stepped off, you see where in the blue where my sword was previously, and the red where my opponent would have been angling his sword to make a strike. 
I physically moved myself out of the way of that attack and struck in right in line to where his weapon would be with my sword. And in this case, hitting with, again, my true edge, calling back to where um, we're talking about the striking to the flats of the masters, correct? Yes, correct. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have anybody to do this to perform this with to show you, but uh, I think we can kind of see here, right? This is you see where if we had an opponent, <laughs> sad face, <laughs> whack. Get the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Now, and again, the same thing can be done. Let me hit clear all. If we're doing this, we can also do this from the other side. So that was obviously Shrunk uh, throwing, uh, throwing a crump out from Shrunk on the right side. There's that. We can also do that on the left. And the same thing. Great. Wind a little bit. Same kind of principle here. My sword is down low. And as a result, nice. this is the spot here. My opponent sees that and says, wow, what a fool. He's leaving his head completely open there. It's just waiting to get attacked. Well, not really, because then I step well to the side and come in with my cross hand or uncrossing hands from this side, get clear of their attack, and strike in again, or I should say again, um, this time with my short edge because I'm coming from the other side, and strike into their blade. And what? similar to before, we now have an opponent here with their sword. There's their sword. Eh. Pretending. Oh, no, I have been struck. And then here, just how sad they look because I'm hitting them. Stop. Okay. So, anyone else want to add any comments to that about uh, using the uh, crump out from Shrankut from that low gu a low uh, barrier guard? Pretty straightforward. Is that, thing, right? is that assuming assuming your opponent is in ox already? Uh, no, I be, I believe that he's not explicitly saying that uh, um, your opponent is in ox. It, this is um, because he's talking about um, giving that opening, that subject sub, suggestive opening to target. Okay, well, my sword's down here. I'm going to present this shoulder. I don't think the opponent is waiting in ox for you to present that shoulder. Um, I, he doesn't say it explicitly, but I believe he's trying to talk about baiting in an opponent to strike you with that overhow, and then you're meeting their blade or cutting into the hands or whatever. So you're leaving that target open intentionally. You're not responding to him on guard. Okay. Yeah. I think the... Other thing to mention about using it from the low guard, sorry, I'll come into frame, is that <laughs> if you miss their, well, you're targeting either their hands or their head with the overhow, you're still going to connect with their blade, which drives their blade into the ground or more out of presence, which then leaves you with no opportunity uh, for something else. So th th this is this is targeting the blade specifically. Is well, it? Well, let's see. <laughs> The pictures had me confused since they were sad. I thought they were getting hit. No, no, I'm, I, I was, I'm sorry. That was a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, um, the, the last line of this section for both of these is um, the, for, for the, uh, for the, uh, from the right, it's saying at the end, and strike with crossed hands with the long edge with the point to his hands. And with the uh, other one, it's saying um, with the short edge over his hands. So he... He is talking about hitting the hands here, but the other part, actually I should say the next part is talking about, the next section talks about striking to the flats of the, the masters. So, I mean, we're gonna read this in a moment, but um, it can be a matter of 
not that it would be incorrect, Rob, but that um, he's teaching you striking to the, uh, he's teaching you the principle of bait in an attack like an Oberhau by leaving a, a target vulnerable and then countering with the Krumpau and hitting the hands. And then the next section goes into, well, you don't always have to target the hands. I taught you to target the hands. Now let's look at targeting something else. Okay. Gotcha. I think that's a good segue into our next section here. <clears throat> this is the text and gloss of a good technique with the Krumpau. Strike crooked to the flats of the masters if you want to weaken them. When it clashes above, then move away. That I will praise. Note, this is a technique that you should use against masters from the binding of the sword. Do it like this. When you come to him in the Zufeshtin, then place your sword on your right side in the Shrankut. See, same kind of setup as before. And stand with your left foot forward or, or hold it on your right shoulder. So, Vantag, on your right shoulder. Not near, not above, not close to, on. Another argument online. <laughs> on your right shoulder. If he then strikes above to your opening, then strike strongly with the long edge with crossed arms against his stroke. And as soon as the swords clash, then wind immediately to your left side with the short edge on his sword and thrust to his face. Or if you do not want to thrust at him, then strike immediately with the short edge from the sword to his head or body. Okay. Yeah, Luke, so, use that cat toy. <laughs> <laughs> so... Just to make it easier, guys, uh, if you want to demonstrate, like Rob, if you want to demonstrate something, make some noise so that it uh, comes up on everyone's screen a little more. Oh, I was just going through it for myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, now everyone's paying attention. Now everybody's watching. Right, Thank so, you, Rob. So here I am in Troncut, right? And they're attacking me over here. And I'm leaping off to the side, drawing my crop and winding to flug essentially and then thrusting. Yep. Now um it says winding uh wind immediately to your left side. And I'm allergic. What the there there's a does someone want to say anything about that? I, I, I don't want to just give answers away to everybody. I want you I want to encourage the discussion. Now, where, okay, I should say this to everybody else other than Rob. Where did Rob whine to when he did this? The face. <laughs> what, uh, what guard did he whine to? I'm assuming Ox. Uh, he, he wound to Flug, kind of. Yes. Yeah, he wound to Flug. This will vary. The text does not say, this is what I want to lead into. Um, it says simply wind against his strike. We can wind to ox or to flug as needed. Poor dog. So he's not saying in this text here, throw the crump, strike him in the blade, and then wind to flug or then wind to ox. He's saying simply wind against him. Because it says against on, his sword, right? Which, which I think means keeping contact with it. Jim? Um, what was the beginning part of that? I it got a little fuzzy for a second. Sorry. Uh, doesn't he? Is essentially he says he says to keep your sword on his sword on your opponent's. Yeah. Yeah, on his blade. Yep. When, when, when you wind, so wherever his blade is, yes. you're either gonna wind the flug or ox on your left side. Oh. Exactly, and that's going to entirely vary depending on your opponent, their strength. If you're fighting somebody that is a lot taller than you, you might end up finding that you bind a little more in ox than you would in flug. If you're fighting someone that's smaller, you might end up binding down in flug because you're suppressing them down. If you're a lot stronger, if they're weak, you don't. There are so many variables that can go into this. But however the blind, uh, however the bind has taken place, if they are still in any sort of presence there, by coming into the crump. And then turning into the winding, whether you keep that the hands low or come high, by turning into the winding, you're keeping presence on them and you're locking them out, whichever way they are. And then you just simply fl flow through to strike them. Stinky brain stuff. 
Make sense? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, that's not here. So I think uh, um, like sort of <laughs> curriculum orientation wise, um, what you were saying earlier, Rob, your question okay. about whether he's targeting the blade or the hands in that first part, I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's a matter of teaching that uh, he's teaching you what the crump how is in the first section here. Just, okay, this is how you do it. You cross the hands, you step to the side. Then he's saying, okay, well, you can bait your opponent in by doing that, by leaving your, you know, going to this guard strong foot, which will leave that left shoulder or right shoulder, depending on what side you're on, uh, open and ready to get, you know, looking like a nice target for an opponent to come in at. And then you can hit them like we talked about already and just learning how to do it. And then there's the, okay, well, you know how to do the crump out. You know how to bait them in. Now that you know how to do those two things, now let's target their blade and do a follow-on strike. So there, there's some logic to some of these that, I mean, it depends on the master too. Um, Lieschenauer's poem seems to have a lot of, um, when you look at the big picture of it, some very logical patterns in the way it teaches you things. It's not just a random bit of knowledge here and there. Um, other stuff like, uh, I, for the life of me, I cannot understand Ott's order of things. Like some, some manuals I can look at, Gladiatore you can look at, and you can see the escalation of the fight going from starting off with spear to then falling to sword, you know, at the half sword, then falling to dagger, and then to the Unterhalt and the wrestling submission holds and things. And it's like, okay, well, this makes sense because we're going from long range, middle range, short range, grapple, pinning. Like, that makes sense. And then you have stuff like Ots Wrestling, where it's like it seems like somebody on ADD was just like, oh yeah, here's another cool wrestling technique. Oh, oh yeah, remember from 10 pages ago that technique? This is the counter to that one that was back there. It is just very erratic. I haven't been able to figure out how exactly, <laughs> I haven't seen the pattern to how that one makes sense, but it, it seems like someone was just jotting notes down as they, as they had things pop in their heads. So this bit here about uh, striking to the flats of the masters. Any, uh, any questions or commentary on that? Yeah, I, I actually have a question. So uh, yes. That's striking, what I'm here for. To the, striking to the flat. So when, when you are um, intercepting uh, this Oberhau that you've baited them into, you want to make sure that your crump is hitting the flat of their blade and not on top. Is that, am I interpreting that correct? Some finer points to that, that yes, I, that's what I, I feel. Um, let me put my book down and grab my uh, sword <coughs> here. This is actually one of those things that again, for our early question about striking with the edge or the false edge, if I'm the false edge, I'm going to cut a little more horizontally here, or I mean, horizontally, vertically, and come down into their edge with my false edge. If I'm in this way, if I must have another blade over here. It's my ass. There's a swords everywhere. So <laughs> that's totally awkward. Let's say my opponent has blade and they're playing with their This makes sense that you see the angle of that. Okay, so there's a, a blow coming in at me because no one's going to come straight down the middle. Mm -hmm. Maybe they might come this way, but generally the standard target is going to be that, say, 30 to 45 degree cut down. That's creepy. I'm swinging a dagger at my own, my own eye here. Uh, <laughs> so as he's coming in this way with, with that blade and angle, that's when I crump here. Yeah. Now, it may not be perfectly my edge on his flat 90 degree parallel, but it's not going to be edge to edge, or in this case, spine to edge. It's going to be a little bit more fair to get the side. It's, one, this is, it's a very good question, Rob. It's an easier question when we find to meet up in person and get to actually do it that way instead of talking on the internet but i hope that i hope that uh helps helps you understand yeah sure thank you
Okay. So next bit. <clears throat> oh, is that? I think he was the Rob was the only one with a question on that section, correct? Anyone else have any questions? I think we're good. Okay, we'll move on to the next bit here. Uh, oh, is that Luke with a question, or is that Luke cooking something? I heard I heard a voice. It's Luke cooking something. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next section here. Uh, this is the text and gloss of another one with the crump how. Don't do the crooked. Strike short. Changing through shows with this. Note this means when he intends to strike above from his right side to you, then go high with your hands and act as if you intend to bind against his sword with the crump and go through with the point under his sword and thrust to his other side to face or chest and be sure that you are well defended above and in front of your head with your hilt. You can also break the guard ox with this technique. When you come... What happened? You're sideways. Oh, sorry, my thing glitched. But, uh, did you guys uh, hear that, or did I uh, get disconnected? You got you DC. Got cut right at the gloss. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, you know what? I'm going to talk myself off Wi-Fi. So, I have the computer. On the internet, and then I'm not. Let's see if that pops up. Okay, uh, so I'm back now. Okay, sorry guys, technical difficulties. Uh, okay, so I'll just start that section again here. Don't do the crooked strike short, changing through show with this. Uh, note, this means when you when he intends to strike above from his right side to you, then go high with your hands. Are you... <laughs> this is just... <laughs> that was okay. amazing. That was a freaking charm. <laughs> that was so amazing. That was karma for clanging the swords together when you know I have a hangover. I, I was being... I, I wasn't being obnoxious with that. Okay. <laughs> okay there we go that's the fun thing about this stuff we're not editing let's do it live okay tone is secure i'm gonna try again <laughs> Thank you. uh then go high with your hands and act as if you intend to bind against his sword with the crump out and go through with the point under his sword and thrust to his other side to the face or chest and be sure that you are well defended above and in front of your head with your hilt. You can also break the guard ox with this technique. When you come against him in the Zufestin, and he stands against you and holds his sword with his hilt on his left side before his head, then bring your sword to your right shoulder and act as if you intend to bind against his sword with the crump and strike short, and with this, change through under his sword and shoot the point long to the other side under his sword to his neck. Thus he must parry, and so you come to striking and to other work with the sword. What do we think about that? Classic. <laughs> it's, uh... It's another, um, I can't think of a word. I'm sorry. Never mind. Someone else say a word. <laughs> sort of so, like a, it's I another, think the word you're looking for is failure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember having a lot of time in the bind with the crump how. So when it describes, like, you go in for a bind, but then, like, it's like a fake out and then you don't. I can't actually imagine what a crump how bind is like that lasts long enough for either of you to, you know, shoot under or whatever they thought said. Okay, yeah, um, this is one that populated. 
good uh, i mean this is the difficulty of doing some of these solely from from text but kelsey in terms of drills that as far as i know you would have done with us um we've done drills in class where an opponent has stand, uh, stood in say left off and we've practiced throwing the crump but when we throw the crump they uh, uh simply withdraw their hands or do something so that we don't hit them in the hands and then from there we just change through and come in and hit them and, and thrust to the face so i've tried to come in and throw my attack and hit them in the hands and then the, that didn't work so i just have changed through oh, underneath right, right. and pressed in with that attack okay i remember that <laughs> thank you it's the same <laughs> yeah it, it's it's that same kind of idea but with more this technique is that same that same attack but the intent was in this case to do that from the beginning from the get-go while the drill we did in class was a little more focused on the idea of striking in at the hands and then doing this as a follow-up okay do you know what i'm saying so, so this is like doing it intentionally like knowing you're going to be doing that ahead of time not that yes. you're doing you're, it you're, and you got stuck so you do it anyway Similar to how, almost again, how some of these things almost chain together, maybe you've gone to the guard Shranka to uh, get him to throw a uh, vulnerable, you know, throw that strike to the, your vulnerable target. He saw you do that and said, oh, they're waiting for me in Krumpau, or in, a, uh, sorry, in Krumpau, in Shranka. This person is, a, is trying to crump me because I know this art as well. So they go to left ox to close off the line because your attack is going to come into that side. So they go there and they're ready and waiting for you. So now you throw your crump to break right. their ox and there go, ha ha, I'm ready for it. And you don't hit you them in the hands. Around. And then you change through underneath right. before they even have time and hit them in the face. All right. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're not, you're <laughs> not even, you're not even getting to the bind in this case, right? You're just pulling it short and then sneaking under. Right, that's yeah. what it means by strike short, right? Yeah, strike short, yes. I think you're you're waiting to see them start their action, and then you change through after you see that they're committed to their action. Yeah, yeah, good point. This one this you said was Clara's favorite attack on you. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's definitely been good with this one. Uh, oh, there's a kitty. Aww. He's very loud today. <laughs> Mine did not join me tonight. Usually Leia comes in here when I'm on the computer. She hears me in here talking to myself and gets confused <laughs> and concerned because she doesn't like, understand okay? webcamming. He keeps talking yeah. with his light box. <laughs> I think he's insane. He's in my bathroom talking. <laughs> <laughs> so any other uh, uh, thoughts on this, The talking about the changing through or anything? Changing through, I mean, he's teaching it here in the context of striking short with the um, uh, Krumpau, but that's also a technique that we can do with the Krumpau, but again, sort of like how when we did our uh, section on the Zornhau, we talked about winding, Dupliaren, Mutiaren, and Abnamen, all from the, uh, from the bind from the uh, Zornhel. This technique here is one of those same kind of things that can happen. You can do a changing through from any other bind, from a, a, a Zversh, from a Zorn, from a uh, Shield, from a Scheidel. It doesn't have to be necessarily from a Crump. It's just taught in this way that in the bind, in the resulting bind of, a, of your opponent, and you both having your hands fairly high, you throwing a crump out, them being an ox, it just is an, a very opportune and optimal time to use a change through. So that's why the lesson is teaching us about it here, but it doesn't mean that this is the only time you can do a change through. There are plenty other times you can do a change through, especially with say like um, going into some of the stuff here we've talked about in class that all these principles are being taught with the longsword, but they all apply to the different weapons. If we are uh, fighting in, with spear and we're both in the high guard, 
it's very easy for me to do a very simple change through with my, my spear from outside to in and make an attack. So these principles that we're learning here from the longsword can apply to our pole axe, our long, our obviously longsword, our messer, our uh, spear, um, any of the other weapons we're looking at. Once we once we understand the principles of fighting from the longsword, whatever weapon we pick up, we can figure out. In fact, I know uh, uh, Trevor, you were just playing with spear recently, and uh, you'd never really used it much before, but. Uh, you you held your own. I've never used it at all. I just <laughs> understood the concept of big long stick with a point at the end. <laughs> but you were able to take some of the kind of stuff we've done, the principles you yeah. learned with the uh, long sword, and a little bit of the stuff that you, you know, the grip and things, the guards from when you worked on half sword a little bit with the long sword. Yeah. You were able uh, to you were able to fudge your way through a through a couple passes with that. Surprisingly, um, half sorting replied pretty damn well to spear. Well, I guess not surprisingly, but <laughs> still. yeah, yeah. A ha half sword is basically a uh, short, a very <laughs> short spear. <laughs> it just gets more uh, scary when it's the full length spear because there's a lot of force behind that very small point when you, when your opponent has a full spear and a set of armor. So any other questions about the changing through from uh, uh, the hanging from the crump here? I think we're good in that, right? <clears throat> okay, there's actually an interesting little thing here that um, margin note, 16th century script, the crump how breaks the guard off. Just this interesting little thing that in the manual, uh, in the manuscript uh, 44A8, there's a, uh, um, a note written in the side sort of like in a college textbook like you pick up used somebody in um what christian notes here as a 16th century script so probably someone a hundred years later was reading through the manual and just happened to wrote right in the in the margin of the book the crump how breaks the guard ox so there's some of this i mean when we're looking at transcriptions and translations this is kind of neat but when looking at some of the facsimiles and the originals, you actually get to see some of that kind of historic, somebody made these notes on the manual at some point, which I personally kind of geek out on. I think it's kind of cool. Um, in <laughs> fact, bless you. if I have, if we look at um, the uh, uh, 133, the English Sword and Buckler Manual, Right on the cover, in fact, I don't know how well you can see that there, but there's illustrations in the uh, the fighting with the sword and buckler in manuscript 133, and it looks like, almost like a child picked up the manuscript at some point in history and tried to, like, color in the uh, the shields. The, the, there, there's all this, let me line that up right, very unusual... Like the artwork is all pristine and precise and well done, and then there's these almost looking like sort of like almost a crayon type scribbling across all the shields. So there, there's some interesting stuff sometimes when you look at the manuscripts that they they aren't the static, um, stale, perfect digital stuff that we see a lot nowadays where everything is perfectly rendered and clean and printed without errors and all this. When you're looking at these old manuscripts, things fade, people wrinkle uh, corners of pages and I don't know, I, it, it's the geek in me, but I kind of like being able to look at some of those details and seeing the life that these manuscripts got to go through before we even picked it up. The, the how many other generations of people picked up 133 or 44 A8 or the Peter Faulkner manual or the uh, Paul's Cowell manual and flipped through them just like uh, just like we are now. That you know whether they were in the Middle Ages or the Victorian era or the Renaissance or whatever, somebody in a library picked this up and was like, "Oh, this is really cool. Let's see what this is." Oh yeah, okay, cool, cool, and yeah, I just. I think it, it's interesting bringing life to some of these techniques and things. That's my geek rant for tonight. Okay, so last section of um, 
this little bit on the Krumpau for tonight. Um, this is the uh, text and gloss of another one with the Krumpau. Strike crooked to who irritates you, the noble war will confuse him, that he will not know truthfully where he can be without danger. Note, when you want to use the Krumpau, then you must always thereby provide an opening. And understand this thus, when you strike the Krumpau from your right side, or bind on his sword, or bind on his sword, then you are open on your left side. If he then if he is then clever and seeks to strike from the sword to your opening and will nimbly and will nimbly mislead you, then remain with your sword on his and pursue on his sword and wind the point of his face and attack him further with the creed or war, that is, with the windings to the openings. Thus he will he will be misled so that he won't really know which opening he should defend against your strokes or thrusts, etc. So, uh, want to get some uh, commentary about that? What do what do people uh, what do people think about that section of the text? There's a lot there, but Rob, you want to say something? <laughs> well, right, right, right from the beginning, the 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 wording is really strange those who irritate you like that's a very Everybody. odd way to put that like well, like <laughs> what, what what are we trying to get at there attack everyone all the time <laughs> um, I, I, that, that is honestly a very good question that what um what when he's saying those that irritate you like what that entirely like Means in terms of modern translation and things, what what that implies? Yeah, um, I wonder if that's like my... a weird translation or something. Because because uh, clearly, if you're in a duel to the death, that this person has irritated you. So <laughs> I feel like that goes without saying. Um, so my I, I... my speculation would be that it may have something to do with someone that you are more nervous about as an opponent. I was guessing it could just mean that uh, somebody you've tried other attacks or techniques against and just haven't succeeded. So maybe this is like con almost the uh, last ditch attempt at landing a attack. That that actually has I I, I like the sound like of that, that, Trevor. Yeah. That you've I mean, you've tried to work from the bind. You've tried to use your Zvers. You've tried to use your uh, your uh, Zorn maybe, and you just keep carrying you. And encountering you, so you're not able to hit him. I know that's that irritates uh, lightsaber Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could, I could see that. Yeah, being a. Uh, I mean, Christian did mention that uh, doing this automatically leaves your left side open, so that implies a a great deal of risk to me. So something you would only do if you really really was trying to end a fight but that just maybe be my interpretation of it yeah and the, the way they talk about uh the, the the rest of the technique basically it sounds like you're keeping your sword on your opponent's sword the entire time and just winding while you're keeping contact um mm -hmm. so you're occupying their sword the entire time so 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 maybe you're onto something maybe they keep when their sword's free they keep parrying you so you're going to tie their sword up and then and then attack oh. uh, interesting basically yeah i don't know he just got beckoned by his dad to climb on the roof so he'll be gone for a minute <laughs> It's uh it's it's an interesting thing as as we're all having this uh discussion here um which is the nice thing about the uh, uh, internet. The fact that I pulled up um, the Crumpow section on uh, Wicton Hour on the, uh, uh, the wiki page that has all the fight manuals. And um, for those that don't know, there's actually um, Michael uh, Chittister organized pages on here that are dedicated to the different master cuts. And it actually has. Like in this case, um, 
Uh, it basically gives a little explanation of what the crumb pow is. That's the page I'm on right now. Um, and then uh, it has uh, Lichtenauer's recital with uh, the uh, transcriptions and translations. And then it goes into um, an anonymous gloss, the von Danzig edition, you know, a different translation, a different uh, translator than the one we're using for from Christian here, but uh, um, Corey Winslow's translation. And then there is Simon Ringek, one of the later masters, uh, com his, his uh, commentaries on the Crump, and then uh, Paul Scowl, Hans Talhofer, Peter Faulk Faulkner, Martin Seiber, Ausberg, Pardonfrey, um, uh, Hutter, uh, Jobs von Wurttemberg. It lists off all the different masters, and you can actually scroll through and look at all the different masters' works on these different strikes, all side by side. And sometimes, in a lot of these, the translations and the original text as well. And um, it looks like just because we were talking about this. Um, strike crooked to who irritates you, the noble or confuse them. It looks like he's using the, this German word, um, irt, I-R-T, with a capital I. I'm not an expert on German language. I took three, four semesters of it in college. That's about it. But um, Trump, Verdisch, irt with the capital I there implies that this is supposed to be a noun. So who irritates you is ir like, I wonder if it's in context of saying an annoying person. Mm. Or one that baits you. Just continually baiting. I'm looking at some of the different ones here, see if anything stands out. So this is just an interesting thing. I'm gonna, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to over the week uh, do some uh, um, look at this word, the, the German itself for irret, I R R. It's it's written two ways in in different editions of the translations here, I R T or I R R E T. So I'm gonna just because this is a good interesting conversation to me to nerd out over these things i'm gonna i'm gonna see if i can find any more information about that term just to, um, just to see if i can find anything cool i'm just on google translate and i typed in what you said yeah, I was too. and it just says wrong someone who is wrong to be wrong be mistaken also wander yeah wander is on there but it's also got like five other words for wander in german Stray, fail, roam about. Streifen, Zeichen. Hmm. I mean, some of these things, words change over over the centuries. Oh my God, for real. I mean, even in ours, I mean, look yeah. at, you know, if I come up and say, that's badass in <laughs> English. Your butt is or, bad. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's entirely constant. There, Wander is basic, Wander is interesting to me. Um, yeah, that's I wonder if it's too, yeah. maybe maybe somebody who keeps who keeps changing guards, who keeps who doesn't stop moving. Right, or maybe it's like they're lost and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> or not, or Rob, yeah. not just in guard right. transitioning, but also um, someone that comes in and doesn't freeze in the bind. Mm. This in is interesting. Out? This like is again. Like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone that keeps pressing. So <laughs> this is this is actually very interesting interesting uh, uh, to to note then that I'm wondering if it's implying that yeah this is a person that's working from the bind whether or not they know what they're doing they're they're not they're a person that doesn't simply sit in the bind and wait and give you time to respond and to respond to that person that is moving quickly and transitioning and moving from guard to guard and moving against your sword, using the windings, what he's talking about here, to keep that, the noble war, the trying to get, keep winding to different sides to keep presence on his blade and keep the point in his face as best you can, that, that's a good way to counter somebody that's moving around a lot, isn't it? Yeah, well, because it also, at the end of the original text, it says that he's not going to know what he's going to be able to do next. 
um, without putting himself in danger. So, like, in an air of intended confusion is sort of what I'm mm. getting from that. From from you to them. Like, you're getting mad, so you're going to do what you can, and they're not going to really know what you're doing <laughs> while you're doing it. Yeah, I, I like this. So you don't know... Uh, this is interesting. So, so, so you're in the bind with this, where you're fighting with this person. You don't quite know what they're doing. You can't read them. You can't, that would get irritating really quick. Uh, so pressing them with the noble war, the uh, Edelkrieg and pressing in, um, in the, with the windings to get the points at them, that takes their ability to simply move from guard to guard or move from strike to strike and makes them switch to an, uh, a defensive tactic because if they're simply trying to do change throughs, Verker or something, or, you know, just keeps, you know, trying to throw little attacks, but the whole time you're just controlling the center, mm-hmm. they can't do that anymore. Now without getting hit. Right. Uh, that would, wouldn't that also play into um, what you've talked about with the Krumpau as well, how you're acting in the vor, you're changing the fight to your own terms. So if there's somebody who's changing through guards all the time and keeps pressing, if you can jump off to the side and perform your uh, krumpow, that's putting the fight on your terms. So if they were wandering all over the place and changing guards and pressing you, that would be putting it on your terms and be irritating too, I guess. Yes. These are some really good and interesting um, notes about these techniques here this is this is a very fascinating discussion guys thank you for this for of course. Uh, thank you because a, a lot of this stuff a lot of these i've i've read these texts so many times over the last decade that sometimes something stands out to like when we're doing the crump how the throw the point to the hands and strike to the flats of the masters. There are certain lines that stand out to me personally based on my experience with the techniques, with sparring, with whatever. Um, you guys see something a little different. Other <laughs> words, the fact that the irritates st- stood out to Rob and now has led to us all talking about this. This is, uh, this is actually very useful, the way this, uh, this online structure works for these classes. I mean, I'd love to be in person so we could actually beat on each other and try these out to, to make our, <laughs> you know, literal and figurative point. But uh, um, but I think the online discussions like this are actually kind of useful. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's enlightening for sure. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So any other comments then that will lead in on this uh, this last bit? Well, I did have one more thought that sprung up about the irritating one. Yes. Uh, if I remember, this was right as I was leaving the room real quickly, but um, one of the translations you said w- from German was wander or loss or something like that. Uh, it was wrong and, so and, and wander, yeah. Wrong and wander was one of the translations. Yeah. So couldn't that could also imply somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, who's lost in the fight. Because to me anyways, when I first started... This was a very confusing attack, seeing somebody's sword go down to the side and suddenly just arc over like a um, windshield wiper. I, frankly, even now with a little bit of experience, I barely know what to do against that. So it could just be advice saying, if this is somebody who's just muddling their way through, this is a confusing attack that is more likely to land. That is that's an interesting addition to that. Thank you. It's uh, um, there's the uh, uh, the idea that not everyone that you fight is going to be a master of the arts that knows all the different fighting techniques that you know, like we ta- you hear about with some of the backs, you know, Fiore and Leech now, and these guys that supposedly traveled around and trained with the great masters of their time, and blah 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 blah. Um, Every once in a while, you're playing with uh, Sarah, the uh, a bunch of uh, uh, ten year olds with uh, boffer swords, and uh, um, it's not fun. Yeah, because they, if you fight someone that does some of these things that doesn't train in the stuff, but you give them a sword, you don't know what they're going to do in response. You bind with them, 
and sometimes they push hard against you. Sometimes they go soft against you. Sometimes they, their responses as an untrained fighter end up being very erratic, which is irritating. And they will tend to wander, tying in all the different terms we've been pulling up with these. They will kind of, they don't know what to do, so they're just going to keep moving around trying to do something because they don't have a real plan. In which case, again, we go into using the, the technique of the windings to just keep putting the point in their face. Um, I call this out on Sarah because I've literally done this with your son, I don't know how many times, that uh, he, uh, he, he, we, we play with the Nerf swords and, or something. You're taking the snot out of me. Yeah, oh, there's that. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, we come in and we, we, he throws a nice powerful cut at me and I block. And then he stays in the bind sometimes and he just keeps, he's seen, uh, he knows enough that he's seen us spar and he knows that yeah. you can work from the bind, but he doesn't always understand because he's young and doesn't have the experience. So he tries to look for these things and he basically will try try to wind, he'll try to change through, he'll try to do the stuff that he sees the adults doing, but doesn't know the right context to do them in. Mm -hmm. So he basically kind of picks the wrong one and tries to wind when he should be letting go or something. And as a result, right. I wind against him and I just keep winding against him. And every time the point ends up towards his face, he shuffles back and tries something else. So, so I think that might Amelia, be this kind of thing. In which case you just aim for a very sensitive area. Yeah. <laughs> At a girl. Yeah. Because if it's Amelia and you try to put the point in her face, she'll just slap you in the beanbag with her sword. <laughs> That's a my valid girl. technique. Valid technique. Girl's vicious. Girl is vicious. <laughs> just natural tendencies. So. <laughs> Wonderful. So I think I think we've all actually made some major strides with that the the context of that technique there. This is interesting to me. Yeah, how is it? And again, feel? thank you guys. When you when you when you ask questions, regardless of how serious you may think it is, when you ask me a, a, a good question about this stuff, it makes me think about it in a paradigm outside what I normally might un, if I'm reading it my on my own. And uh, I I personally find it very valuable. It's one of the the great things about getting to be a, a, a teacher is I get to kind of, um, I get to look at these from not only my perspective, but I get to look at it from all your perspectives too. And um, it's why I encourage people like Rob and Luke and people that as they become ranked members and things in, in class, I encourage them to start taking on even small leadership roles as well in terms of coaching some of the new people because it, again, makes you think about, well, you know, Rob, you're super freaking fit and strong and fast, <laughs> but then you're working with somebody that doesn't have those advantages, so how do you teach them how to do that over how when they haven't been lifting weight seriously for the last decade? So it makes everybody look at these a little differently, and, and working with other people make, makes you really analyze not just what you do, but how you do. Well, excellent, everybody. So, uh, any other comments or questions or anything on the Crumb Pile for tonight? Mm, no, I don't think, think we're we good. covered a lot. I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, so next week we will go back and look at the next strike. What's anyone know what the next strike would be? The third of the Master Cuts? The Without looking? The strike. That's very yes. sure. Oh, yep. Not working? Yeah. No, you're both correct. The oh. the fort or horizontal cut, depending on the translation, but the zversh. And that can be found mm -hmm. on doo -doo 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 -doo, page 98 and oh, just kidding. Hmm? Page 98 and 99 of In Sing George's Name is the uh, original text. That's the Leishan Hours verse itself. And then on page, we'll be looking at page 117 through one. Oh, that might be a long one. Uh, 117 through 120, though, we'll see how long that takes. We might break that up 
because there it goes into the uh the failures and the verker and a couple other techniques following on from the zversh so um i don't want to turn online class into a four-hour endeavor so uh <laughs> look at read through page 117 through 120 until we get into the squinting stroke the uh, the shield how but uh, um depending on how long things are going next week we might break that we might just break that uh break that into two pieces or something we'll we'll see how long how how long we go through it so your homework page 1 uh 99 and then 117 through 120 if you can get outside with a uh, a long sword uh a simulator a big piece of stick or something and get some video of you going through some of the techniques walking through whatever you can and uh, uh photos or videos and uh share it with the class yeah we'll do right, excellent <laughs> so any other questions for tonight guys um any word on when class can start again oh good question um i haven't heard from the town specifically but when i've been paying attention to the state guidelines something like um june 20th was when um fitness centers were going to be allowed to open up again and i think that we would kind of we kind of would fall under that sort of category okay now i i know that some people are still uncomfortable and want to follow social distancing and things so um if it works out that with the town we're allowed to resume training as of um late june um what we may do is for the first so many weeks resume class but focus on distance uh solo drills and um and fitness side of things and just really drill some of that kind of content for at least a few weeks or so um just to get everybody moving again while also keeping a safe distance between everybody um, we won't be doing any wrestling or anything like that for a little while. Nothing up close and personal. If you're in range of sweat on each other, you're going to be too close, basically. No, I'm, I'm, I'm down with, like, uh, drills and fitness stuff. That sounds pretty good. Oh, yeah. We can yeah. talk to, uh, we can talk to <laughs> Lightsaber Rob and get him to work yeah, on we stuff can. to, to really oh, boy. kill us every week. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, killed you, killed me, but it was a blast. That it was, was good. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Thank you. Glad you had a good time. Excellent. Well, I'm going to uh, end the recording for tonight. Everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll be back next week to look at the uh, Zver Show. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chris. You.